Need to know about muscle fiber types and muscle contractions? Well, you're in the right place. So it's Rich on Planet PE and it's looking at the different fiber types that we have and also about how your muscles actually contract. So keep watching if this is what you're after. In your BTEC exam, you need to understand that there are three different types of muscle contraction. So previously, you've always been told that one contracts and one relaxes, which is kind of right. However, there's actually three different types of contractions or ways that your muscles can contract. So we have our isometric contraction, we have concentric contraction and eccentric contraction. I know. So isometric, concentric, and eccentric. So an isometric contraction is where your muscles actually stay the same length. And that's gonna happen when you are in a stationary position. So if I'm performing a handstand in gymnastics, then I'm gonna be dead still, and therefore there's no movement going on, so the muscles won't lengthen and they won't shorten. They stay the same length. So they're basically under tension and they're staying the same length. Another example would be in a rugby scrum. So you think about in a rugby scrum, crouch, bind, set, okay? Or crouch, hold, engage, or whatever the calls are these days, it keeps changing. So when they are set and they are not moving, that there is isometric contraction. When they then do the engage, obviously there's movement going on, so therefore that changes the contraction. Which brings us onto the other two. So we have concentric contraction and eccentric contraction. So concentric contraction is the one that is going to be all about when the muscles are shortening. Okay, so typically, as you would think about as normal contraction. So if movement occurs, then it must be that a muscle has uh, shortened, and that is what we call concentric contraction. Whereas eccentric, an eccentric contraction is where the muscle would typically lengthen. Now you might see that if you are doing things like running downhill. Okay, because that's quite important because so you don't run away with yourself, you're gonna use eccentric contraction to actually slow the movement down. Now each of those can also be described as a positive phase or a negative phase. So typically, if we're doing a positive phase, so think about the upward phase of a bicep curl, the bicep is gonna work concentrically. In the downward phase, the bicep is actually gonna work eccentrically. So if you think about talking about muscles going um, shortening or lengthening, or what we said, the agonist and the antagonist, we could say that they are contracting concentrically or they are contracting eccentrically. So that's all about muscle contraction. Now, there's a bit of a law that goes on with muscle contractions and it's called the all or none law. So basically, muscles can't contract a bit. They have to contract or they don't contract. So just like a light switch. So if I was to turn my light switch off, it's gonna turn off. And if I turn it on, it's gonna turn on. Now where that comes in is it's actually gonna be about uh, the different fiber types. So if there's enough of a impulse sent down the motor neuron or the motor unit to be stimulated, then the muscle fibers will contract and therefore cause the contraction. Now when we talk about muscle fibers, Again, we've got some more terminology. So there are actually three different types of muscle fibers that are gonna be important for different sporting actions. So we have a type one fiber, a type two A, and a type two X. Now your type one fibers are typically what we call slow twitch fibers. So they don't contract with lots and lots of force. However, they are quite fatigue resistant. So they, they are able to contract and work for long periods of time. So typically we would expect that um, a marathon runner would have lots of type one fibers. And the reason that it's gonna be good for them is because they contain lots and lots of mitochondria. So the mitochondria are the area, areas of a uh, cell which are responsible for aerobic respiration. So essentially the more mitochondria you have, the more fatigue resistant your muscles are. So therefore type one fibers are fatigue resistant. And one reason for that is, is they have lots and lots of mitochondria. So they work aerobically. Now the type two fibers are slightly different because they're gonna work typically slightly more anaerobically as a whole, because where they work is that they're gonna be working with high force. So if you think about a sprinter, they're gonna be using typically type two fibers. Now a 400 meter sprinter or a 200 meter sprinter might have a different proportion of fibers to a type to a um, 100 meter sprinter. So you think a 100 meter sprinter is gonna be all about flat out power and isn't really worried about endurance. 
So they tend to have maybe type 2 X fibers. Now type 2 X fibers have quite high anaerobic properties. So they will create lots and lots of force, but they fatigue really, really quickly. Now if you're a 100 meter runner, that's not a problem because you perform once and then you're finished and you haven't got to worry about it. Now if you are a 400 meter runner or a 200 meter runner, it's slightly longer, so we need a little bit more fatigue resistance. So type 2 A fibers are really, really important for maybe our 400 meter runner, possibly a 200 meter runner, depending on how fast that you uh, run it. And these fibers are a little bit more fatigue resistant because these are what we call fast oxidative glytolytic fibers. I know it's quite a mouthful. So these fibers, yes, they're anaerobic. Yes, they create lots and lots of power, but they're a little bit more fatigue resistant and they're slightly different in color. So you'll see under a microscope, they're a little bit more red, okay, kind of pinky, whereas the type two X fibers are really, really white. And it's because of about their, their blood supply. So if we've got this richer blood supply, we're gonna get more oxygen coming in. So therefore we're gonna be a little bit more fatigue resistant. So in your BTEC exam, you need to understand about those fiber types and the contractions and make sure that you can give specific sporting examples to support your answer. Okay, so that quick one is there. Now, the next video we're gonna look at is the responses of the muscular system to those single exercise um, sessions. Okay, so if you wanna watch that, watch the next one. So click along, you should see it in the playlist. Keep revising, good luck. And again, if you've not subscribed yet, subscribe.